good morning on another beautiful morning. It's Saturday and um, it's about, I think it's about quarter past seven or so in the morning. So I've just got the Kelly kettle boiling and I'm looking forward to my first cup of coffee. Could be my only cup of coffee, but let's just call it the first and then that leaves the door open for another one later on. Maybe. And Jack says good morning. <laughs> well, I've just made a green smoothie. This isn't a juice, it's a smoothie. And um, it's got banana and oats, chia seed, plant milk, spring water, spirulina. Um, what else? Is that it? I think so. Oh, and stra frozen strawberries. So the overwhelming taste is of strawberries. It's lovely and it's cool and it's lovely and sort of thick and nourishing. And I'll be having this for my breakfast now. So um, those of you who are interested in where I get my energy from, it's from a plant-based diet. <laughs> and it's delicious. Oh, I've been busy today. Um... Now, this is especially for anyone in the UK or Ireland, where slugs can be a problem, especially to new seedlings emerging. Slug-free way to grow salads and microsalads. Look, hanging basket. And you can see I've put, I've uh, sown mizuna in that one. Um, the kale is coming on an absolute treat. I am so delighted with that as is the parsley. So I have another basket here of Mizuna. And then, look at this. My little cut and come again. My little microgreens are all sprouting in this small fish box. It's on the windowsill now. My spearmint is looking great. I'm gonna start cutting this now for tea. Looks to be fairly well established. And, uh, yeah, there as well. Now, let me see, over here, I've been busy, 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 just sowing seeds because this is, a, this is just the right time to do it, you know? So we, uh, we need to make some plans for our own little futures. So this has got baby leaf lettuce. It's a nice big pot. It's not too deep because you don't want it too deep for lettuce, but this is probably enough. But it's a lovely wide pot, you know. So this is here on the on the veranda of the lodge. And then, come on Jack, we'll take a wee dander over to the tunnel. It's been a fabulous day again. Absolutely fabulous. Beautiful sunshine. Now there's a few clouds up there now, but... And I think they're... They're sort of blowing from the east, the northeast, so that's probably why it's a little bit cooler today. Look at the flowers popping up everywhere. Anyway, let's go over to the tunnel. So I got the big fish box out from the barn, and um, I filled it with compost, and I've sown it with a selection of seeds. I've had my little, my little mobile fire pit go in here. That's all the couch grass that I um, pulled up from various parts of the garden. I think it was about a week ago and I just dried it off in the tunnel. So I've burnt that. Now I might give it a wee second burning just to make sure the roots are all dead. And then I'll spread that um, because that's good fertiliser. There we go. So, I brought that little table in. I thought that's ideal, just pop it there. So I've sown lots of microgreens. Well, I call them microgreens, but I mean, it's basically anything green which is edible. You know, the seeds off, you just sow them and mix them all in together. And then as I was watering that, and talking to it, because you've got to talk to your little seeds. I was looking down here and look at all the beautiful rocket 
I mean, there's masses of rock all the way through the tunnel. And this is all self-seeded. So what I did then, I took some various seeds. I can't remember any of them now, so I'm going to be amazed when things come up in here. So I've thrown a few seeds down there and a little bit of compost on the top, watered it in. I've just kind of sprinkled seeds everywhere. And then you'd be amazed at what actually comes up. And it allows you to become a forager in your own garden, which is a lot more exciting than just picking out carrots from a row of carrots. Oh, there's a beautiful bee. Look at that lovely bee. Oh, yeah, should be able to get out easily enough. With both doors open in the tunnel, you know, there's um, there's a little bit of a breeze then that allows them to travel. Now, some lovely little flowers out on the Chinese forget-me-not. So this is lovely. This is f food security for the bees. And there's that fennel, which is beginning to look as though it could be I could start harvesting from there. Yeah, because you've got to wait until the fennel gets to a certain height and then you can start harvesting, knowing that it's just going to keep coming back. And of course, this is another reason why the beautiful bumblebees are in the tunnel, because all the flowers in the nectarin tree are just opening. Doesn't that look sweet? Looking down there, look, there's more rocket come out by that stone. So I think I'll be bringing my, my little garden basket out here and uh, collecting harvests of green for adding to soups and salads. It's a sure way of keeping healthy, making sure you have your greens. There's Jack Forage in there, look for a little bit of a particular grass he likes. You can see him now, he's just, he's just sniffing out. He'll find it. So it's Sunday morning and uh, I've just spent ages, it must be about an hour, trying to get this pot bound bamboo out of the pot and of course the pot was rounded, you know, so it was more difficult to get out. <sighs> I went looking for my crowbar but couldn't find it. So it's taken me a long, long time just to extract this from the pot, but I persevered not to be uh, deterred, I persevered and I've dug a hole up here in this little gap in front of the old hen house to put the bamboo into. So that's the next task that I'll be doing and um, then after that I have this quite huge and very healthy tree which I've grown on in this pot which I've just carted round. I'm not too sure where I'm going to put this beautiful tree. It is rather gorgeous. It's one of those specimen types, you know. Um, so I'll be thinking about that now while I plant the bamboo. I'm out of breath, you know, I'm really out of breath. Let me just walk you over to the tunnel. As I went looking for my crowbar, thinking perhaps it was left in the playhouse, the old playhouse, the old hen house there, um, which was full of straw. So I thought I'll clean out the straw and uh, see if I can find it. But what I managed to get was three, or was it four, wheelbarrows filled to the brim with straw that had been 
uh, that had the, the hand droppings in it, you know, from years ago. So I've piled it all up over here on my compost heap. And um, so I think now this compost heap, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it now until about the autumn. I won't put anything else on it. I'll leave it until the autumn or thereabouts and then uh, use that in the garden. So there we go. That's another task done. The primroses are just out everywhere. Can you see them down there along the path? And uh, oh, <laughs> I'm actually just trying to catch my breath. I'm watching. I'm watching one. Is it that a crow or a rook? Look, it's flying just above the cottage. I think that's one of the pair. In fact, yeah, the other one is there on top of the old chimney. Can you see the first chimney that isn't used? Now it's just up there. That's just gone in. So that's where it's going to be having its babies. Oh, what a beautiful morning. It's quite cold. It's very sunny and very gorgeous. I made a little Facebook Live this morning. I put that up on the Facebook page, Bealtaine Cottage Goddess Gardens. So that was the early morning chat. I think it's time I went in and made a cup of tea, actually. I've been out here several hours now and I'm quite exhausted. Um, on the plus side, my neuralgia's cleared up, so I'm feeling a lot better there. big goal that I've set myself for today of course it should have been getting that bamboo out of the pot but I didn't think it was going to be such a big task so the big goal the big task I've set myself for today is to get this Bramley apple tree pruned um, I'm really cutting it very fine in terms of time um, you know as the season progresses but I think that if I don't do it uh, it's just going to, you know, the problem's going to increase. There's a lot of branches growing into each other and that. So a very sort of not severe cut, but um, sort of a hard cut back on this. So, chat with you later. So, I've planted the bamboo. I've been over to my compost bins and brought back two buckets of compost and spread it. And I've now got a big bucket of leaves to take back over to the compost area. And as I was just stood here by the Pieris, which is very heavy with flowers, I heard a bumblebee. In fact, the bumblebees are out all over the place now. They're having a great time all together. Look at these flowers. Look how heavy they are. They're amazing. So I put a few handfuls of compost into the old milk churn there that the Pieris is growing in. There she is. Huh? She's just flitted away off. Now, so I've cleaned down the steps, hence the big bucket of leaves. And uh, I've got a new pot now to plant into. So, and I've also cut back a load of the rubus there. This is how I work. It's all very organic. I move from one little task to another and then after a couple of hours I collapse. <laughs> so there's the bamboo in there. That's going to grow beautifully because you see the bamboo over there. Look how tall it grows. It's very, very easy to cut back and it's fantastic then for all sorts of things. You know, whether it's some um, shredding it up for the compost toilet or making your own garden canes um, 
for kindling, makes great kindling. Um, oh, just it just goes on and on. You know, you can you can make so much when you've planted a garden very densely. You've always got a harvest. So this little piece of bamboo now is going to grow and completely shield out that old hen house, which I don't particularly want to see. Oh yes, little one. Yeah, you can you can sing. You've just followed me down those steps, haven't you? Picking up all the little all the little grubs that was inside the leaves. And now you're singing to me. Well, you have a beautiful song. A beautiful song. Yeah. Let's have a wee peek. This little robin follows me around the garden. Wherever I'm working, he knows that there's a little feast to be had. So if I just pull back a little bit, without falling over that pot, that is, I might just pop down onto the steps. He's singing away now. There you go. See, where I've moved those leaves, he can see little grubs and little worms. See? That's why it's good to leave the leaves on the ground during the winter. Because he's having a little spring feast now, just at the point where he needs it. Because he's got a lot of parenting to do. <laughs> he's going to need fortification. <laughs> funny. Thinking about a home for this beautiful tree, but I really do think it's time I went in and had some sort of brunch. I haven't had breakfast, so something between a breakfast and a lunch will do me nicely. I might do some nice toast, one with peanut butter and one with marmite. Now that should fortify me well. I'll make a smoothie later on. Actually, now that I've sat down, I've got some right old aches in my back. But if you'd have struggled with that pot, trying to get that bamboo out, you'd be you'd have a few aches and pains as well, no doubt. Hmm.